Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Global Cooling Rundown, April 22nd to April 30th, 2017. Following on the heels of yesterday's video, pointing out that ice is not even melting far into April now because I only used the last couple of years showing where it's flat, but told NSIDC doesn't even count ice loss in April. Here you go, the previous charts. Do your own research on the interactive. New paper confirming the pause continues. As well as temperature data tweaking, no way that never happens in a political agenda. New temperature data sets out. NOAA, uh, the planet is cooled behind record year 2016 by 0.18. Wait a minute, maybe my math's wrong, but 0.73 minus 0.19 is not 0.18, NOAA. Also, ahead of, meaning plus, 2015 by 0.15, C. Wait a second, I dug up the 2015 temperature data, and maybe my math is really bad, but 19 minus 18 is 1. You're putting a 0.15, are you kidding me? That's 15 times higher. And thank you so much for the comments and the feedback that you've given me about the talk that I did with Lee Wheelbarger. If you have a moment, jump over to Mini Ice Age Conversations on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and SoundCloud and really see how this grand solar minimum is going to unfold with the electrical phenomenon we can expect. One of the hugest stories around the planet, United States losing power as well as some places in Europe and our satellites. So many theories out there, everything from Operation Gotham Shield to hacking, even the CME was proposed, but that was going away from the earth on the other side of the sun. But interestingly, solar wind increased to 800 kilometers per second, as well as at 1600, that density spike of the actual particles coming in on late April 21st. Here's the real culprit. Why did our power go down? It was the magnetospheric compression. We go from this in the morning, 4 or 5 p.m. in the afternoon, and look at that compresses all the way down to that white ring is where our satellites are. It was so intense that the inflow of particle charge broke through and directly contacted our Earth. Surface charging, the auroras over the South Pole glowing, the auroras over the North Pole glowing, but the charge coming in was so intense. Purples and blues. Rolf Witsche forecast for decreasing solar winds. As this happens, our sun is going to go into a phase shift. The ancients were trying to warn us in some of their petroglyphs. This is Valentina Zarkova's work, interference in the hemispheric rotations. And then during this event, never before seen type of light, a new plasma filament type in our skies. This signals a change from dark mode to glow mode in our atmosphere with the electrical charge, electric universe. So my question is, are we going to see this first in our heavens or are we going to see the white dragon? Because what was just up there was something the ancients witnessed and it is here again. Spring is in the air across Europe. Six inches of global warming on the flowers in Turkey. So much snow, the police are advising those in Norway, ditch your car if you don't have snow tires. Poland, two feet. Austria, six feet of snow. Central Italy, a couple feet. More of those vertical, deep, penetrating lows into Europe through next week. Intense lightning on the way. This is from the last weather front passing through Italy and Portugal. Record cold across Italy, dipping into North Africa. Anywhere in green, 12 degrees Celsius below normal temperatures. Switzerland, record cold temperatures in April. UK, 2 to 5 C below normal temperatures. Two feet of snow expected in the US next week. Snow continues in Canada. First week of May, anywhere it's red on this map, heavy snow. So much for the early spring mainstream media. New type of auroral plasma jet seen in the skies last week. Highly charged blue aurora is roaring down to the planet's surface at the same time. This takes us right back to ancient Chinese cosmology and Pongyu creation myths. That is the explanation of the Birkelin current. The dragons are the representation of this. Top image, low voltage. Bottom image, high voltage. 
The legend had to be so encompassing that it could go from the microcosm to the macrocosm. On the right, Fu, Shi, and Nu Wa. Notice the circles at the top and the bottom. Those are cross sections of the Birkeland currents with the filament streams. The explanation of the creation of the universe, both magnetic and electrical, intertwined in these creation myths. They've also left us clues about the intensity of these currents coming to power our sun and the effects on our earth, all revolving around the Yunlong, top image cloud dragon, or the bottom Fenglong, which is the wind dragon. High solar wind pressure, high solar activity. Right images, sapphire, which now we can blend modern plasma physics with ancient cosmology. Dotted patterns that actually represented the phase shift in the sun. This is encoded in the Matsu temples. And when we look at the Sapphire project in their chamber environment, we see the exact same dots in the hemispheric lines, north, south, and the equatorial bands. Ulysses showing our solar wind is decreasing. And on this phase shift, there's going to be an energetic release. The Chinese have studied the sun and the moon for thousands of years. They've broken it down and encoded it into 36 weapons the gods used to protect humanity. Left, Yunlong, low voltage current stream, cosmic ray bombardment, clouds on our planet affecting agriculture and society. Right, high current stream called the Fenglong, meaning wind dragon, solar wind, which means solar activity at high levels. I'm starting to decode all 36. They do show pinch patterns, zeta pinches, bulge currents in the plasma stream. And when we come down into the cosmic ray forecast for solar cycle 25, it's going to be 19% higher than this cycle, which was already up 14%. Can we correlate Chinese mythology with true events on the planet? Ho Yi, 2170 BC, charcoal rubbing, showing the interconnected plasma fillings overlapping. We see this in the Sapphire Project, we see this in plasma globes, and then we see it on something that's 4,000 years old in a stone carving. It's termed the 4,200 year event, 4.2K event, crows in the sun. This is standard throughout Asia. Are they signaling a temperature shift on the surface of the sun where Chinese mythology also encompasses plasma filaments touching from the sun to the Earth's surface. Shepard Zarkov and Zarkova's work with canceling hemispheric effects, ushering in a grand solar minimum. And when we get a wave state change, we get a phase state change as well. And it's my firm belief when the solar wind pressure drops below 36%, as in the protector weapons, that 36 is so encoded in Chinese mythology, that 36% is it. When it drops below that 36%, the sun is going to unleash an EMP toward the Earth 2019-ish.